Good morning, everybody, and welcome to St. Paul Lutheran Church's Virtual Sunday School. I know Sunday School is going to seem a little bit different this year, but we're still going to have fun and learn lots of things about the Bible together. And we're going to learn stories. The first story that we're going to learn is about creation, which makes sense because it's the beginning, and we're beginning Bible, Bible, to the Bible today and Sunday School and all that. Um, so I want to share with you the story. In the beginning... When God created heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. And darkness covered... Oh, well, wait a second. And darkness covered the face of the deep, while the wind from God swept over the face of the earth. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Uh, God said, let there be light. Uh, come on, God. Ah, thank you. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. Okay, guys. Okay, we got the hint. Enough water. God called the dome sky and there was evening and there was morning. The second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seeds of every kind, and trees bearing fruit of every kind, and the seed in it, even pomegranates. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons for, and for days and for years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God, God created... God created great sea monsters and living every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm. With which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind and God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of every, uh, 
earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the animals, the wild animals of the earth of every kind. Oh God, I'm glad you guys don't have a cow. The cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the humankind, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed upon that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit that you shall have them for food and to every beast on the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth everything that has the breath of life I have given every green plant for food. And it is so. God saw everything that he made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude... And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done and created. And boy, I know I'm tired, so I'm taking a nap. Thank you, Pastor Anthony and Justin, for introducing us to today's Bible story about creation. That was a lot of fun to watch. And welcome to all of you to virtual Sunday School for Sunday, September 20th. I'm so glad that you're here. It's the start of a new school year, and whether you are going to school in person or doing virtual school, it's always exciting to start something new. As you can see, we decided to start virtual Sunday School, but hopefully we can be together with our friends at St. Paul again soon. The book of Genesis tells us about the beginning of the world. That's really cool. God made all natural things like water, rocks, trees, animals, plants, and people. I'm going to read parts of the story of God's creation once more, but this time as I'm reading it, I'm going to do some actions and I want you to follow along with me. Get ready to do what I do. In the very beginning of time, before there were any people or animals, or night or day, there was God. The world was dark and covered with water. God decided to create a world. God created the sky. God created water and land. God said, this is very good. God created plants and flowers and great trees with tall branches. God created the sun, the moon, and the stars. God said, this is very good. God created many, many creatures. Creatures that swim, and creatures that fly, animals that walk, animals that creep like snakes, and wild animals like lions and tigers. God said, this is very good. God created people people who can think and feel and care for all of God's world. 
God said, this is very good. When the world was finished, God was pleased. God liked the earth and the sky, the day and the night, the plants, trees, fish, birds, and animals. Most of all, God liked the people who would care for the earth and everything in it. Once again, God said, this is very good. It's amazing to think about everything that God created. Now imagine what it must have sounded like when God was making the world. Do you think it was quiet or do you think it was noisy? Let's pretend that we are there listening while God creates everything. What did you see and hear? There was a lot of noise. There was wind, lightning, thunder, fish in the oceans, and many animals. It didn't seem quiet, did it? There was definitely a lot of noise. Genesis chapter 1 verse 31 says, God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. Here is a fun video for you to watch called Stories of the Bible Creation. Go ahead and watch the video, and I'll, I'll meet you on the other side of it. Stories of the Bible Creation In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was empty, formless, and dark. But the Spirit of God was there. On the first day, God said, Let there be light. And God saw that the light was good. Then He separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. On the second day, God said, Let there be a space to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. God called the space sky. On the third day, God said, Let the waters beneath the sky flow together into one place so dry ground may appear. God called the dry ground land and the waters seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the land sprout with every sort of plant and tree. And God saw that it was good. On the fourth day, God said, Let lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. God made two great lights, the sun for the day and the moon for the night. He also made the stars. God set these lights in the sky to light the earth, and God saw that it was good. On the fifth day, God said, let the water swarm with fish and other life. Let the skies be filled with birds of every kind, and God saw that it was good. On the sixth day, God said, let the earth make every sort of animal. God made all sorts of wild animals, livestock and small animals, each able to have babies of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image to be like us. So God created man in his own image. He formed man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into man, and a man became alive. Then he saw that the man needed a helper, so God put man into a deep sleep, and while he slept, God took one of the man's ribs, then God made a woman from the rib and brought her to the man. Hello. Hi. Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and rule over it. Rule over the fish in the sea, Hello, the birds in the sky, Hello, bird. and all the animals that scurry along the ground. <laughs> then God said, Look, I have given you every plant throughout the earth and all the fruit trees for your food, and I have given you every green plant as food for all the animals. Then God looked over all he had made, and he saw that it was very good. So the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them was done. So on the seventh day, 
God rested from all his work, and God blessed the seventh day and said it was holy. That was a fun video, right? Isn't it wonderful to think about all the things that God has created? Here's an activity for you to do at home. I want you to spend some time looking at God's great creation. God's creation comes in all different forms, places, and sizes. Your job is to find a photo and photograph something very large that God created, something very small that God created, something you find funny or interesting that God created. My family went hiking last weekend and took some pictures. I'm going to show you what we found. I would love to see what you find too. Post your pictures on our Facebook page or email them to me. We will gather all of our pictures together and put them on the bulletin board at church that showing God's creation. Remember, large or small, plain or interesting, God's creation is all around us. Genesis chapter two, verse one says, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all their multitude. That means that God created heaven, the earth and all the plants and animals. Do you think God's creation still exists today? Yes, it does. Even things that people make, cars, houses, toys, all begin with materials from God's creation. God's creation is all around us, even if you look at things that humans made. In past years, we have started our Sunday school by having a church picnic. At the picnic, the Sunday school kids have walked to Beachwood Beach and did a beach cleanup. Why do you think we do that? We do that because it is a way for us to take care of God's creation. The planet and everything on it have been entrusted to our care. Do you know that by caring for God's creation, you can go green for God? What does it mean to go green? I want you to think about what you can do to care for creation. Maybe picking up garbage and recycling. Those are two ways you can take care of God's creation. Can you think of some more? I want you our craft today reminds you to take care of God's creation. To do this craft, you or your parents will need to print a copy from the link I sent in the email. On that link, you'll also find a coloring page called The Creation Story if you want to go ahead and color that. For the craft, you're also going to need some scissors, ribbon or string, I used yarn, crayons, and a hole punch if you have one. Younger kids might need a little help with some parts of this craft, mostly just for tying the string. If you are not able to print out the papers or need any supplies, I will have extras available outside my office at church for you to pick up. This is what the two pages look like. There is one paper with the earth on it, and it says God wants us to take care of his creation, and another paper with three hearts on it, and the three hearts say God wants me to take care of his creation by. Do you remember how I asked you to think of ways to care for God's creation? Go ahead and write one idea on each of the hearts. After you write down your ideas, go ahead and color your pictures. Of course, you can color your pictures whatever colors you want, but usually we use green and blue for the earth, so that is what I colored mine. After you color the earth, go ahead and color your hearts. Once again, you can use whatever colors you like. When everything is colored, go ahead and cut out your pictures. The last thing, oh, here's my cut, my pictures that I cut out. The last thing you need to do is punch three holes in the bottom of the earth and a hole in on the top of each of the hearts. Here's the one I did. You're going to take your string and put it through the heart. And then you can put it through the earth on the bottom there. and tie it up. So it ends up, ends up looking like that. So you're going to go and do that for each of the hearts. You might need a parent or a big brother or sister to help tying the knot. You can also punch a hole through the top of the earth 
so you can hang it up from the ceiling or from a window or wherever you like. What a great reminder of how you can take care of God's creation by going green for God. Now on my heart, what I wrote for my ideas for taking care of God's creation was reusing water bottles, turning off lights, taking and taking shorter showers. But you can put whatever ideas that you came up with on there. Reading the creation story in the book of Genesis gives us a lot to think about in terms of what helps and hurts the world God gave us. You may have thought of these ideas already, but here's some other ideas that could help the environment or the world around us. Shutting off water when you're brushing your teeth. Recycling or reusing water bottles. That's one of the ideas I wrote down. Buying food from local farmers at farmer markets. Walking or riding a bike instead of driving a car. Turning off lights or the TV when you leave the room. All right, that's it for today. What an awesome job. Thanks for joining me for our first virtual Sunday School. We're going to close with a prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for creating a wonderful world for us to enjoy and explore. Thank you for all the work you put into the world on each day of creation. We pray for all parts of your creation, especially the animals, the plants, flowers and trees, and all things that grow, the oceans and rivers, and all the people that live on earth. Help us to take care of your good creation. We pray for these things in your name. Amen.